Okay, you may have seen methods like this, which are chained from each other. The tooth level method right here is changed to the replace method right here, and the replace method changed to remove, and remove method changed to the count method, which is from link. And these are chaining methods. So what it does is it is uh, returns the instance of the object that we've been calling the method on to the next, so that we can call another function on that same object. So to demonstrate that I have created a class uh, known as string developer which creates strings from adding uh, another string to the content and you can remove another uh, character at the end and you can get the text by lab. So to implement this I'm going to create a new uh, string developer object sd equal to new string developer and now you can change uh, the content directly but you can add text like this and hello like this and then you can console right line this using st dot get text and that's it so to make this a chaining method uh, all of these methods should be chaining methods to do, to do that you have to return a string developer object from all of these methods and uh, not the get text method because it's a string and you can return this the instance so another return this then you can add text again hello world and you can see I have two trailing exclamation marks and you can remove one using remove car method so with that method this is also returned presents this and you can add and something else from that too uh, Now if I test this out, you can see it is working right now, really great. So these are chaining methods and how you can implement chaining methods on all uh, your own classes. This is real fun and it's used in most of the cases in .NET Framework. So as you can see it is used in link and all of the extension methods under strings and those kind of things. So see you guys in the next video.